Hi everyone, today I'd like to talk to you about the new Ranger and Tim Holtz Distress Micro Glaze. I'd like to show you how to use it and just show you a different few different techniques that I've done with it. When it comes, it comes in a 1 fluid ounce and 30 milliliter pot. When you take the lid off it, you'll find it's actually a solid wax like glaze rather than a runny glaze that you can also get. It's nothing like the glossy accents that's available. Uh, this protects your stamped images and the colour that's underneath it to resist colour that you may put on the top of an image or around it. So what I'd like to do is show you how to use it. The first thing that you'll see when you put your finger into it is a very soft wax. It's got a very low um, melting point and it's colourless, it's odourless and unless you tilt your work to the light you can't see it. So really it's great for anything. I've tried it with a wide range of different inks and it seems to work with most of them. Today I'm going to be using the Ranger inks anyway. So first of all I'm going to show you a few of the different things that I've used with it just to test the techniques. And first of all, I've used the Christmas Bauble from the Just Right collection. This is on plain white card. I've stamped it, I've covered it with the glaze, and then I've inked around the edges, and the centre of the bauble is still white. The second technique that I tried, because I wanted to put it through its paces, I stamped the bauble again in fire brick and then I covered half of the ATC with the glaze and then I inked all of the ATC and you can see there's a distinct line where the glaze is resisting the ink that I've inked over it. Then thirdly, again I've used fire brick I've stamped the bauble in the centre as previous and then I've used a water-based ink technique for the background which I'm going to show you how to do that because it's great. It's kind of messy and it gives all your cards a little bit of interest. So this was glazed over the centre of the bauble but nowhere else on the actual background and you can see where it's resisted against the glaze. So I'm going to show you how to use it. So first of all, I'm going to take my plain white card. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, so bear with me. Just so that you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to take the same stamp that I've been using, which is the bauble stamp. And I'm going to ink it up using the fire brick. So we'll do that. Make sure you've got the stamp covered in ink and then I'm going to stamp it central to the card like so and then I'm going to stamp the sentiment in the middle as well so that's there ink that up so let's pop that in the center right so once you've got your stamped image you're going to take your glaze and you're literally going to take a little bit that's probably too much on the end of my nail so but you buff it off in the end so take the wax which is um, melting already on your finger and rub it into your stamped image now you don't have to wait between stamping and doing this but I do recommend that you make sure that your image is dry because your ink would run if not so mine looks as though it was nice and dry under the lights 
So that's all you do. Rub it onto the image, making sure it's all covered. Now I'll show you. Don't know if you're going to be able to pick up the difference on the card against the light. I'm using uncoated white card that I've been kindly sent from my creative crafting world. There we go. You can just see the shine that the glaze gives. Now it's not a glaze product to give a shine, it gives the shine before you buff it because obviously it's building that resistance against anything else that you put on. So next, with a clean dry kitchen towel or paper towel, tissue etc, you're going to buff the area that you've put the glaze onto. So it's just a simple rub and buff just to take the excess amount away from it. So that's all covered. You're not buffing it to make it shiny. It's not like gilding wax. So then I'm going to take brushed corduroy ink and using a blending tool I'm just going to literally go around the outside and ink it. So what I'll do is I shall go straight across and you can see where it's resisting. I'm using the same amount of pressure as I go across the image as I do as I'm going around the corners. So I'm not trying to fool you, I'm not pulling your leg or anything, it is literally resisting the colour. So, and just to prove it, go over the image like so, and you can see it's picking it up all the way around rather than in the barbell. So that way it's keeping the white as the background and the colour surrounding it. In fact you can see where I've taken the wax over the barbell, that bit isn't inked. So that's a, a good idea of how it works really there. So another technique that I think is really cool and it shows exactly how well it works is where the, resi the resist technique comes in um, to its own really. So we're just going to stamp uh, using fabric again. So I'll just ink my bauble up. I'm going to stamp it in the middle again like so and then I'm just going to add the sentiment as well just so that they're all the same and you can see that I'm not doing anything differently or using a different stamp or anything. So what I'm going to do now is again I'm going to rub the glaze over the stamped image just as before, rub it on and rub it all the way around the image. Now you can see it a little bit smudgy at the top because my ink wasn't quite dry. I'll buff that off. So you don't need a lot of pressure to buff, you're literally just taking the residue away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put ink on my splodge mat like so. This is the brush corduroy and I'll put a dab of fire brick on there as well. And then with my water spritzer I'm going to spray the mat like so, so it's nice and wet. And then I'm going to take the card that I've just stamped, you've just seen me stamp it, 
and I've put the glaze in the middle. I'm going to drop it onto the splodge mat and splodge the card on like so. And then I'm just going to take a dry paper towel and take the excess away from that like so. Now with this you can see that there's no ink in the centre. All the ink is around the edges. It's literally not where I've used the glaze. I could keep going and this is really cool. So I've still got my mat and I can splodge down as many times as I like. It's still not in the centre. So that's a fab technique to use with it to make backgrounds. You'd be able to use it on so many different surfaces and so many different textures with your embossing folders if you were going to ink them to draw out some of the texture, things like that. So I really hope you like this demonstration just showing a few brief things that you can do with the new Distress Glaze. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.